Good morning, folks. I've, um, I was just having a conversation with one of my customers and they were asking about first aid kits and um, what they should take. They've got, they've got some kids and they've got a few um, different health health things between you know mum, dad and, and the kids. Um, this is one of the really important things that we talk about in store and while we have snake bite kits and bandages and, and while we have these um, these large family packs versus the little oh, I can't reach one at the moment but the little day packs um, and I was just explaining to him basically that I don't treat my first aid kit as something that's just there and I look at it once a year or you know whenever we go camping I use my first aid kit as something that I look at regularly I put my medications in there I put my Ventolin in there, not that I need a puffer very often, maybe you know once a year, once every two years. Um, I have often I have problems with my back, so I have Voltaire and Rapid in there. Um, if I've been on antibiotics, I've come off those antibiotics, I'll put those spare antibiotics into my first aid kit. Um, and I basically go to the first aid kit regularly. I've got two kids, so I mean, the amount of times they cut and graze, skin their knees, all the rest of it, I keep multivitamins in there. I keep a bunch of stuff. So anyway, I was explaining this to, to uh, this customer this morning on the phone and I said, um, I said, I wish I could show you basically what's in mine. It would make a lot more sense. I'm way over the top when it comes to first aid kits, um, but it's because I use them regularly. I'll, I'll just show you here. This is the back of my ute. Um, and I've installed a hook in here. That sits here all the time. Right. So if I'm at home and the kids done something into their knee or someone's cut themselves or burnt themselves or got bit and stung. I go straight to the back of the car, pop the cabin open, I don't have to run through the house. We've got one of these in our house as well. But this is the one that I use, I carry with me everywhere um, and it's got a lot of stuff um, for the bush and on the assumption that it's not necessarily me that's going to be in trouble, it might be somebody else. And that's happened to me quite a few times when I've been out in the bush, there's been motorbike riders that waved me down and of course uh, I'll give you one example. I was um, I was out at a spot one day. There was about 15 motorbike riders hooning around all day, um, and as I'm coming back into town, they basically blocked the road. I stood across the road. I'm coming tearing down this track, and they're standing on the road. And I thought, geez, these guys are going to try and mug me or something. They were like, you know, they were tr really trying to stop me. I pulled over, and they said, thanks for thanks for stopping. Do you happen to have a first aid kit? I looked at these guys, and between them, there would have been quarter of a million dollars worth of bikes and padding gear and all the rest of it. None of them had water or a single first aid kit amongst them. Now this guy had come off his bike, he had gravel all down the side, he'd lost a heap of blood um, and he was shaken, you know, he was, in a, he was in a pretty bad way and they didn't know what to do for him. His bike was manged up, none of their bikes were set up to, to carry another bloke in that condition so I was able to pull out my first aid kit, basically had to get the guys to hold him while we did it, he wouldn't let me clean his arm. So we ended up doing a spray bandage to stop the bleeding, which is a horrible way to do it, to put all that, put all that stone and everything inside the cut, but he was fighting us. And um, we stopped the bleeding. Um, I was able to get his bike and stuff in the back of my, back of my tub. And um, we gave him some uh, electrolytes. I gave him a couple of bottles of water. We put some electrolytes in there and tried to get him to calm down. Got his fluids back up. Because he'd been you know, riding really hard, had massive adrenaline, uh, he was bleeding quite aggressively. So. That's just a small example of why it's important, but I didn't want this video to go on forever. I'm gonna open up my first aid kit and just show you what's actually in there. Because, uh, and you don't need to, you don't need to go as crazy as me, but it just might give you some ideas on what you might pack. So, this is a <clears throat> personal section. So this is just an area where you put things that you don't want to access, not necessarily gonna access very often because it's the first bit that you open up when you open your kit, right? So in here I have some little some little hooks. I have some multivitamins. I have an energy gel, which is what your cyclists use. Has some electrolytes, a bunch of medication, Panadol, Osteo, Voltaren, Rapid, Nurofen. Um, there's a cigarette lighter in there, just in case. Instant cold compress, that you pop that and it, and it freezes up really quick. Great one for burns. That comes standard in this kit. Uh, heat blanket, emergency heat blanket. That's come standard in this kit. Uh, this is another one, yeah, these are pretty expensive, but they're an awesome bit of kit to have in there. That's a life straw. 
Uh, always make sure I've got one of those when I'm traveling, at least in the car. But this is the thing, if you, if you make my first aid kit my go-to, this is where I keep everything. So it's all in one place. I can just grab that bag when I, when I and chuck it into my backpack if I'm hiking out, or if I'm going into the house, going somewhere different away from my car. Um, these are antibacterial tablets. They're sort of similar to similar to the life straw. You can use those to, to get into some nasty water. Um, I don't know if you ever gone to a chemist. You see they have little samples of products, very cheap little you know the two dollars. This is just um, one of these is a moisturizer and one of them is a, a sunscreen. So on a day that you've forgotten to bring your sunscreen out, you know that you're cooking a little bit, you've got that in the backpack there. All right, I'll just I won't bother packing this stuff back in because this video is taking too long. I've got more bandages, extra saline, um, some lip stuff, Stingos, that's in a gel, uh, survival blanket, it's just some cotton buds and a bit of tissue, put extra tissue in there, that's more of a in case of toilet type situation, not sure that well you can see all this stuff. So this is all pretty much standard what comes in with the kit. You have your tweezers, you have splinter probes. I don't know if you've ever tried to get a splinter out by yourself, but these splinter probes are amazing. Uh, fever strips. You've got your first aid brief book here. Um, gloves, hydrogel, so these are you know for burns. Now in this kit. Everything's marked really quite quite clearly. So this is a lot of standard stuff. So you can look at this stuff on in the listing anyway. CPR kit, this is a really important one. So with this kit particularly, you don't need to know what the process is. They actually explain the process in here. So you open that up for CPR, you pull this one out, it tells you check for dangers, check response, send for help, clear and open the airways, check for normal breathing, give 30 second chest compressions at 100 per minute, following two second, uh, two rescue breaths. Now, I've got additionally, I've got a tiny little pocket knife. I've got some very small amount of tape, a little bit of copper wire, puffer. This is an absolute lifesaver if you're bleeding and you need to stop the blood really quickly. A spray bandage. Uh, everything else in here standard bandages, wound dressings, etc. And then we have iPads, of course, combine dressings. And so I'll basically check this periodically because we use this all the time. I'll make sure that we're constantly updating. So if my kids have got stuck into this for a couple of weeks, we've had a lot of um, you know, a lot of a lot of tears and a lot of a lot of cuts and scratches. You know, sometimes a kid can go through five or six bandages in a day, uh band-aids in a day for one cut. Um, and so when every time I'm at the chemist, I'm, I'm looking for um, you know, band-aids that are on special, or I'm looking for saline solution on special, and I'm constantly rotating. This stuff can sit in here for a couple of years and then it goes out of date. So you might as well toss it, replace it, and keep it relevant. And hopefully you don't ever need to use it. That's the ideal scenario. You don't ever actually need it, and you've got it there, and you might just end up helping somebody else at some stage. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to show you guys. Like, I know it's a lot of stuff. It's a lot going on there. but this is going to help out in a lot of situations and it really doesn't cost a lot to have all this stuff ready and it may be the difference between having a really good adventure and a, a small drama just being that as opposed to being a really horrible event. Um, now the other thing I would add, I'll, if I'm only taking a first aid kit, I'll definitely have a snake bite bandage in here. I actually have a snake bite kit on the other side of my truck there, which is a small kit, which I always take with me. But if you only have a first aid kit, Learn how to wrap a snake bite and just have a snake comp or a, a compression bandage in here. Um, I'll show you one other thing while I've got you quickly. This is pretty inexpensive. A bit OTT, but this is in case someone's choking. These are not very expensive. Um, you can see how it works. Push that on a, push that onto someone's face. Now I'll just grab out. You have a small, small piece for a child and a big piece for an adult. This goes on the back there. If someone's choking, you literally just put it over their face, straight down and pull that off. And that can dislodge food if they're choking. That's, again, I know I'm way over the top with the gear that I have in the car, 
but it's kind of a duty of care thing. Um, and it's not very expensive stuff. It's all, it's, it's, it, once, you, once you've got it all accumulated, it's just, it's just maintaining things that go out of date. And uh, things like this, I'll just buy these on special. That's good for, that's good till 2026. All right, that's just a little energy gel. So if you ever felt like you were fading out in the bush, got the dizzies, realized you hadn't had enough, um, enough to eat, you got, you're drinking plenty of water but didn't have enough energy, one of those could be the difference between getting back to the car or not. And you know, two bucks from a supermarket. So I waffled on long enough, guys. Sorry about the long video, but I just wanted to show you some of the gear that I keep in my first aid kit. And um, hopefully it gives you some some ideas about things you might want to take out with you in the bush. Cheers.